Hey guys, today I'm playing Raft, and I want to try beating the first chapter of the game using only one Raft piece. Now chapters 2 and 3 are pretty trivial with this challenge, but chapter 1 is anything but. To keep it interesting though, I'm also going to try using the smallest possible footprint at any time. So, let's get right into it. So I loaded up a new game here, and the first thing I did was start to get some wood. Now I'm going to need wood for my first main goal, and that's to make an axe. The thing is, you start out on a 2x2 two two Raft, and of course, that's just way too big. So I'm going to want an axe to be able to cut this down. Now while I was at it, I also picked up some extra materials like plastic and leaves, and these are just generally useful items, so I figured I might as well collect them while I was at it. But the problem with the axe is in order to get it, I need stones. And you get these from two main places, either from islands, or they get spawned randomly in barrels. So whenever I saw a barrel, I pretty much immediately targeted it, but it's not a guarantee you'll get it. And after pulling in two barrels here, I didn't even manage to get one. I did get a potato though, and I'm gonna need that for food, so that actually ended up being really convenient. The very next barrel though did have one stone in it, and I was a third of the way there. So I just kept pulling stuff in here and finally I had two stones and two scrap and I can use this to make a research table. This I'm gonna need for the story so I figured I might as well put it down now. I just put it in the very edge of the raft here. Now I went ahead and I just started researching everything that I had except the stones because I didn't want to lose them yet and while I was getting this barrel I noticed Bruce started attacking the raft. This shark is just gonna keep coming around and biting my raft which for now is fine since I wanted to lose some extra pieces but it's gonna get really annoying soon since we have less than two raft pieces. Things get extremely glitchy but for now I just wanted to get to this island because I knew I could get some stones from here. So I just picked up some extra stuff along the way and I ended up docking on the shore here. Now I have no way of securing myself against the island besides just paddling and hoping the friction holds me in. So after I was confident enough it should work out, I found this little area of stones and I just picked one up here and I also got the piece of scrap next to it because why not? And I ran back to the raft. After that, I made my stone axe and I also made a building hammer. And the first thing I did here was took out a bunch of the extra raft pieces. And normally you're supposed to have two raft pieces at all times. So you have just one. It should delete the other one automatically. So I was really surprised that didn't happen. But to get this challenge done, I was going to use two triangular foundations, which make up the exact same footprint as one foundation, but they count as two, which makes it a lot less glitchy. So after I had that done here, I had my very small raft and I put back down my research table. Now it's time to start surviving. So I built up this little platform here and I put a small crop plot on it. This I'm going to fill with my potatoes and that's going to be my main food source. And my only real threat is these stupid birds that keep coming down needing the crops. But for not too long, I made my water purifier, which I do need to grow the crops, but I couldn't fit it on the raft anywhere. I tried for a while, but eventually I had to get rid of the research table and that gave me just enough room on the bottom to put it down. The fact that I was already pretty space limited was getting me a little worried, but I just ended up filling up my water purifier here and I built up a wall on the backside. With that done, I figured I might as well pick up some extra metal pieces while while I was at it, and I also grabbed some extra scrap. I did avoid getting any sand and clay, and this ended up being a very big mistake. My next main goal was going to be to make a smelter, and for that, you need a lot of sand and clay, but I figured I could just get it at the next island, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And with paddle, I ended up just pushing away from the island again, and that's when I realized that Bruce was attacking me. And to save my raft, I ended up making the spear here, and with three hits, he ends up going away pretty easily, but the raft is now damaged, and I'm gonna need to repair it. This isn't too bad, I only need a piece of wood for this, but it does require me to actually get the piece of wood and build it, so it's really easy to forget to do this, but at least this time I remembered and put it down. And with that done, I have a lot of time before I get to the next island, so I made a grill here and I can use this for my potatoes. I picked up three barrels and these gave me the blueprints for the receiver and the antenna, and I was glad I got these already because these are crucial items to the story. Now I noticed a small optimization I could make. Once I harvested my potatoes, I picked up the crop plot and I put it on the side of the raft like this. This saves me a ton of space on the top and that should make things a lot easier. After that, Bruce started attacking me, so I ended up having to beat him off the raft, but I I did kind of forget to repair the raft this time, which was sort of going to be a problem. Now I also picked up my water purifier and I put it on top and this was to clear a little bit of extra space. Now I picked up a barrel next and this was so that I could get some extra palm leaves and that gave me just enough to make a sail. The sail is a really important part of this game to be able to get around and it was the main reason I made some extra space earlier. Now you'll notice I built up the raft on the other side a little bit so I could put down the sail and with that done, I ended up opening it up and I angled it towards the island. And this was going really well so I ended up just picking up some extra extra food here, and once I did that, the raft just disappeared, and I was kind of wondering what was going on here. And that's when I noticed Bruce was around, and also I remembered suddenly that I did forget to repair the raft, so I think he just attacked it and then like instantly destroyed it, and then I was left without a raft in the game raft. 
which is definitely a problem. So I had to load my last save here, and I had to spend two wood to repair my raft, which was just enough that I couldn't rebuild my sail. So I awkwardly paddled towards the next island, and this one, I was really hunting for sand and clay. Before I did that, though, I just wanted to pick up a tree, and then I had to guard my raft. The thing is, if he attacks my raft at all, it's completely destroyed. So my plan was to guard it, wait till he attacks, and then after that, I have about five minutes until he attacks again, and I can use that time to get some extra materials. So after just going ahead and beating up Bruce here, I repaired the raft, and I started to get some sand. Now I picked up basically everything that I could, and I also found some clay. And there's a bunch of scrap on the ground as well, which is pretty useful, and I also found some metal. The very first thing I'm gonna smelt is metal, and this is for an extremely good reason, which I'll talk about later. For now though, Bruce has gotten slightly more aggressive, so I just wanted to make sure that I got back to the raft, and I crafted all the wet bricks that I could. Now to make a smelter, you need six dry bricks, which means you need six wet bricks, and to make those wet bricks, you just need sand and clay, and then you need them to dry out on the raft like this. And after getting the ladder down, I started paddling away from the island. Now I started collecting some leaves again, and finally here, I was able to remake that sail. So I just fit that roughly in the middle of the raft, and I picked up my dry bricks. Now I do need to research one of the dry bricks to make the smelter, which means I actually still need three more bricks, and that means I'm going to be needing six extra pieces of clay and six pieces of sand. So I sailed over to the next island, and I was just waiting for Bruce to come by again so I could beat him up. Now I saw him approaching here, so I got on my spear, and I tried attacking him, but I forgot to repair the raft again, and now with a single raft piece, it gets extremely glitchy, and it just floated straight through the island. Now this is why I didn't want to use one raft piece, because the game really doesn't like it. In fact, this should just not exist. So I decided to reload here, and actually repair my raft this time. Now with that done, I started picking up some sand and clay, and of course, Bruce was still tormenting me, which is getting a little old. But I ended up only getting a single piece of clay from this island, despite getting six pieces of sand. So I'm good on sand, but I was gonna need to go to yet another island and pick up some clay. Now on the way there, I found this little floating thing, so I just picked up this crate, and after that, I made it to the island. Now with a little bit of paddling, I managed to get stuck in this crevice here, and just waited once again for Bruce to come by so I could beat him up and get my five minutes to collect stuff. This time though, when I was beating him up, I actually noticed something. He just died. This was really convenient for two reasons. The first one is that once he's dead, I have five minutes where he's not going to be bothering me at all, so I can just collect whatever I want and I don't have to get bitten by him. The other good thing though is that it actually gives me a ton of shark meat, which means that I don't have to rely on just potatoes, which was getting a little burdensome to continuously farm. And of course, I picked up all the clay I could and I also got some copper because I'm going to need that to make the receiver and the antennas. Now, after a little while, Bruce eventually came back, so I was going to have to get back to my raft here and I put down my last three bricks and with that done, rotated the sail and <laughs> got out of here. Now I started cooking up my shark meat and I wanted to pick up these dry bricks, but the sail started getting in the way and it was opening and closing. So this is already getting a little annoying to deal with, but with a little bit of crouching, I was able to get those bricks. And in order to fit the smelter, I started by deleting the research table. And it didn't take too long for me to get a barrel and a plank, and that was just enough to get me the materials to make a smelter. And you'll notice this thing is huge. It's like literally the size of a foundation here. So I had to pick up my sail and I put it as far on the edge of the raft as I possibly could. I wanted this to interfere as little as possible, and it actually did seem to be out of the way mostly. Now, like I said, the first thing I wanted to smelt here was a piece of metal, and this was really important. Once I have this metal smelted, I'll be able to make raft foundations, and that's going to prevent Bruce from destroying my raft at all. So I picked up that metal ore, I made some nails here, I finally fortified one of my raft pieces, and after not too long, got the second piece of metal, and that was enough to fortify the other one, and now finally, Bruce cannot bite my raft. This is going to make my life way easier, because I don't have to worry about Bruce at all anymore. Now, I made a streamer, and this is like a see which direction the wind is going. It just makes it a lot easier for me to be able to angle the sail in the optimal direction so I go as fast as possible. Now since I didn't need any more metal melted, I decided to start melting some copper. Now again, I'm going to need this for the receiver and the antennas, so building up as much of this as possible will be great. The other thing is since I only have one smelter, it takes kind of a long time to get all the materials together, so I figured I might as well start now. Now after that, I just started researching basically everything that I had. And after that, I started cooking up some seaweed here, and I'm going to need this to make circuit boards. Now I also put in a bunch of copper as well, and this is because I was pretty set at this point on getting the receiver and antennas done. Now I went to this next island here, and it happened to have literally no metal on it, which was great. So I had to go to another island, and finally here, I got a bunch more metal, and it was just enough to finish up the receiver and the antennas. Now I spent a ton of time in creative mode planning this out, and this was the smallest footprint I could possibly think of to get the antennas to work. Now I'm still using my one by one foundation on the bottom, but in order to get the antennas on here, I need to extend it out, and to do that, I have to use some of these roofing pieces and floors, and I have to delete my grill to create a little bit more space to put in this last roof. Now with that done, I get this sort of star shape coming out of the middle, and I have to put the antennas on the extreme edge of these floors. Now the reason for this is that the antennas have to be two blocks away from the receiver, and about three blocks away from each other, and this was the most compact design that I could possibly think of. So after I got those in place, I put down the receiver here, and finally with that, I just
just needed to get a battery for it. Now, before that, I put down an extra wall and I put back down my grill. And finally here, I put in that battery. <laughs> that in place, I gave it a shot. But then I realized that I didn't put the receiver up high enough. It needs to be at least two blocks off the ground. And right now, it's only half a block technically. So I'm gonna need to put down another one of these extensions. But once that was on there, I put back down the receiver, put back in the battery and giving it a shot, it did seem to work. It spawned in the radio island a little over a thousand meters away and it was directly into the current. As far as I'm aware, the first island is always with the current, which means getting to it is very easy. Now I put back down my sail and my streamer here and after that, I figured I might as well use this extra space for stuff. So I put down my purifier, put back down my smelter and also made an advanced grill. And this grill cooks a lot more than the original grill, so it's a lot better for me. Now I did want to put down a throwable anchor and this is that I could at least temporarily anchor myself, but I literally couldn't do it because you can only put it on foundations. So I was gonna have to just ram myself into the radio tower and hope things work out. Now, as I was approaching it here, I was trying to find a good spot to land where things were gonna be okay. And it seemed to work out well enough here. Now the radio tower is pretty simple. And I just picked up a bunch of the extra loot here. And after that, just worked my way all the way up to the top. And that's where the note is. Now the note's important because it has a four digit code and that code I'm gonna need to put into the receiver. And that's what's gonna allow me to get to the next island. Now I picked up a blueprint as well. And there's also a survivor in here, but I didn't really wanna talk to her because she talks for a long time. So I just decided to run away. And after that was done, I got back on my raft and I started to paddle away. Now I went to my receiver and I was gonna put in that code, but the sail kept getting in the way. So I had to just delete the sail. And with that done, I inputted the code here. And I found that the next island was again, a little over a thousand meters directly with the current. So I put back down my sail and started floating towards it. Now I also upgraded my water purifier and this one's a solar still. And this one's pretty much better in every single way. I don't need to use any planks for it. And it processes literally like five times the water. So it ends up being a lot more efficient. Now after waiting a long time, finally here, I ended up seeing the island just barely off to the side. So I opened up my sail again and I started floating towards it. Now I also noticed a gap in the rocks and I wanted to get in there because I figured once I got in that little cove, there's really no chance of me floating away. And also since I only have one foundation, I should be able to slip right through it. Now it was a tight fit, but I did manage to squeeze right through it here. And after that, I anchored myself in this little rock right next to the cruise ship. And once I was anchored in place, I walked around the ship and I picked up some of the extra crates on the ground and also picked up a mechanical part. This is going to be useful for one of the components inside of the boat. So I figured I'd just snipe it now. And after that, I entered the ship. Now I made sure to bring along with me one of these advanced spears. And that's because there's these weird rat things that are in here and they're kind of annoying. So I figured I might as well use the upgraded stick and prevent any problems. Now I found one on this couch here, so I had to try beating it. And I forgot that it takes three hits instead of two. So it ended up getting an easy hit on me here, but I ended up killing it easily enough. And as a little reward, it drops a bit of meat. I figured I could probably use it for the food for the rest of the game. So I ended up just venturing through the ship. I picked up the bolt cutters, picked up another mechanical part. And after that, I opened up this locker. This gives me the blue key and that allows me to get to the staircase. Now I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a large boring puzzle and considering I don't have the headlamp, it's actually really hard to see a lot of this footage anyway. So I skipped ahead until I made the bomb and the car jack. And the car jack's actually totally optional, but the bomb you need to open up the very top room and this is where the note is to get to the next island. So I just planted that bomb and of course I had to fight off one of these rats, but I did manage to kill the rat and with that done, I entered this room, but I was doing it kind of cautiously. I didn't really want to get jumped by a rat at this point since so my health was getting a little low, but thankfully there's no rats in this room and I picked up the blueprint for the steering wheel and the engine. And with these, normally that's how you get to the final island. I am not gonna be able to fit them though, because to make the engine work, you need three foundations, which of course I don't have. So I'm gonna need another way to get that done. So after I got that note, I went back to the raft and paddled out of this little cove. Now I blew my sail to go with the winds and I actually didn't want to put in the code to the receiver yet. Once I do that, it spawns in the island and I didn't want to spawn it in until I was absolutely ready because I wanted a bunch of materials to make paddles. Since you're expected to have an engine at this point, normally you could just turn it around and go against the current, but I can't really do that. So I'm gonna need paddles in order to get there. Now, fortunately the sail is actually extremely close to getting to the last island and I only need a little bit of paddling to finally do it. And after moving the sail around and trying to get the positioning right, I noticed that I was getting kind of close here, but it seemed to be moving slightly down, which means I was gonna barely miss it. So that's when I started crafting paddles and that's when I started paddling all the way over there. Now, a lot of this paddling was actually unnecessary, but also sped up the trip a little bit. So I figured I might as well do it. Now I took a small break and I made a lantern to make it slightly easier to see. And with that done, I just kept paddling. After an extensive journey, I turned and I saw the island spawned into the left. So I just started floating towards it. And after that, I just used the paddle to do the very last leg of the journey. And that got me stuck right on the beach. Now, considering this was the last island of chapter one, I kind of just wanted to get it over with quickly. So I walked over to the entrance here 
here, and I remembered that there's bears in this island. Now, these bears will try to attack you, and they're a lot faster than other enemies, so they're kind of hard to avoid, but I figured I could probably just figure something out here. So I started walking up the mountain, and I wanted to find one of the three radio towers. Now, you need to activate all three radio towers to get the code to leave this island, and while walking over here, that's when I saw my first bear. Now, it immediately turned to get me, so I had to try running away here, and it's a lot faster than I thought it was gonna be. In fact, it was like right on me, and my spear only had one health left, so I really didn't want to use it unless I absolutely needed to. Now, running up this mountain, I was getting hit a lot, because my evasion techniques were definitely not that good yet, but eventually I did manage to sort of get my way up to the top, and I did use my spear, because I was getting a little worried at this point, and after a few more evasion techniques, I wanted to get to the acid pool up ahead. I figured once I got to this, there was no chance the bear was gonna follow me, and as long as I make it through the parkour course fine, I should be good to go. Now, I'm pretty sure this acid takes away 10% of your health every second, so I really wanted to avoid going in it, and that was also the reason why I figured the bear really shouldn't be a problem here, but the bear simply can just go through the acid. I guess he's just built different, so I still was in danger. Now, I kept running up the path here, and I ended up avoiding it for a while, and I found the ranger station up ahead. Now, I couldn't complete the challenges inside of it, but at the very least, I could take refuge in it, and I was hoping this would be enough to prevent any more problems. So I hid away real quick, and I picked up some plastic around, and I waited until day. After that, I looked around, I couldn't see the bear, so I decided to open the door and run away as fast as I could. Now, fortunately, it seemed like the bear had died from boredom, because I couldn't see him around. Maybe that, or he died from the acid, I don't know. But anyway, I went towards the first radio tower, here and I turned it on. After that, I went to the second one, which is also pretty easy, and I turned that one on, but the third one's a little more challenging. I had to pick up these wild berries and put them in this bin, and that attracts this massive bear over towards it and prevents it from killing me when I go in its cave. Now, I need to go in this cave because I need to get the machete inside of it, and this machete will destroy some vines that are blocking the path to the last tower. So I walked up to those vines, and finally now I could destroy them, and that was enough to get me all the way to the tower. Now, this is pretty much the same as before. Just climbed all the way up it, activated it, and that gave me the final code, and that was enough to beat my challenge. So guys, thanks for watching. I bought Raft a few years ago, and I've enjoyed it ever since. So if you have any more challenge ideas, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Make sure to like the video if you liked the video, and otherwise, till next time.